All right, let's compare the Motor Guard XI5 with the Minn Kota Terra Nova. All the timestamps will be in the description. Let's get into it. So you basically deploy the motor as you would any other trolling motor. Push down on the lever with your foot and just lift it with your hands and it just clicks into place. It's got the little plastic clipper here that clips the shaft into the base. So make sure that's all lined up and in, otherwise it'll just swivel on top. With the Ming coders, you need to turn them on, the new ones, um, and they also have a battery indicator light here on the top, which I find is handy. The cords, cables that you've got coming out are a power cable, obviously, it's here, it's got an Anderson plug on it for convenience sake. Uh, the second is a ethernet cable, which you can run to a compatible sounder. In this case, it would be a hummingbird. And the third cable attachment is for your foot pedal, which we'll talk about foot pedals in a minute. All right, to deploy the motor guide motor, you just hit the lever with your foot of your hand and slide it down. You've also got a knob there to adjust your shaft size as you may need. Now the cords, cables available are a power cord, obviously, which I have an Anderson plug, again, for convenience. And this is your NMEA plug, so you can connect that up to sounders and adjust. Now, the base of the unit, you have four indications. It's one for power on and off, one to show you whether the motor is engaged, the third one is the GPS, and fourth one for power. Now, the power is indicated by only green, orange, and red. All right, so here we have the Minn Kota iPilot Link Remote. So it's got a keypad at the top and an LED at the bottom. So at the top, you've got your engage your prop. You've got your left, you've got your right. You've got your increase speed, you've got your decrease speed. So when you press these up or down, it will display there on the bottom of the screen and it will go up in half increments. So you'll know if you're in current, just holding forward, you know, you can hold forward. So it's a good indication of where you're at. At the top left, we've got the on button and the selection key for the screen down below. So if you press this, it'll cycle through all your little options on the bottom. So you click that all the way through. That's a way that you can select on the touch screen without actually touching the screen. Top right is your confirm button. So make a selection. Bottom right is your spotlight key. So if you press that, you'll see on the bottom of the screen, it'll come up that we've been spotlocked. Okay, so turn it off again, easy done. And at the bottom right, you've got a home button. So that'll cancel out anything that's on the bottom screen and bring you back to the main menu. So if you tick this and you went into something and got something sorted like into settings and got right into the weeds and you wanted to get home, you just press the home button, brings you all the way back. So just to close up on the bottom here, we'll start with the first selection, which is the autopilot button. You click that, your autopilot will come on. Uh, and then in addition to that, you can click through and change the autopilot mode to legacy or advanced, depending on you know what you what you need. So I'm not gonna go into what those are here. It's, it's very minor, so I'll just keep it on advanced. Um, now if you wanna turn it off, just click that same button again and it'll go off. Next one across is cruise control, which is different to just setting a prop speed. This will keep you at a, a specific speed, not just a prop speed. So if your tide's running and then it slows down, it'll keep that same prop speed. So turn it off, just click it again. No worries, you see the prop's still going here, we'll just turn the prop off. Down here you've got your record for your recording of your eye tracks and all that sort of jazz, um, which is handy if you just want to have a defined track. Just click that to get out of there. Next one across is high speed bypass. So this will automatically put your motor into uh, full speed or rabbit mode. So moving down, you've got go to spot lock button. Uh, obviously there's no spot locks in range here, but if you did have a spot lock, it'd go to it. Next one across is very similar. The eye tracks, we've got none in range, but if you did, um, it would go to it. Next one here is mark waypoint. So it'll drop a waypoint down, and if we go to the next option here, it'll have a list of your waypoints, and you can organize them in uh, time, distance, name, anything like that in this menu here. So if we go back, uh, you'll 
you'll see a couple of waypoints here. It's kind of like a sounder in this regard, except that when you click on it, um, your motor will just take you there. So here you can see we're 2.73 meters away and it'll just navigate us there and either spot lock or autopilot, depending on uh, what settings you want to put on in the, in the arrival map. Going into the options now, you've got all sorts of options in here that you can sort of muck around with. Autopilot we talked about already. Uh, scroll down, you've got arrival modes for things that I just spoke about, or the spot lock when you get to a waypoint, or put it straight on autopilot. Uh, and then you've got things, just normal things like, you know, props and backlights and screen rotation if you're comfortable with it being the other way. Uh, all that sort of stuff just just basically admin stuff as well time and date and uh, languages and all that sort of stuff that's where you'll find all of that let's get out of that all right scroll down to settings here you've got all your about you can disable your touch screen menu edit update your software uh, pair it you know all that sort of sort of admin stuff again so basically that's about it All right, the motor guide remote uh, will take you through all the buttons on here. We might as well start in the middle here with the prop and gauge. Click it on, motor will go, click it off, motor will stop. Then you've got your left and your right. That's pretty self-explanatory. Speed up, speed down. You've got 20 increments there. However, no indication of what setting you're on, so it's a bit annoying. This button here is your heading lock, so if you press that, it'll take you in that direction no matter what. Up and to the right, you've got your cruise control that'll set a speed and maintain it. This here is your anchor button for the pinpoint GPS. It'll keep you on the spot. This button here will turn the remote back into manual mode, so it will delete any modes, the heading lock, the cruise control, the spot lock, all that return to manual mode. At the bottom of the remote, you will see eight numbered keys that will store both recorded routes and anchor points. And then you've also got your record button and then your play button. So record to record your routes, play to replay them when you need to. And that's uh, that's the nuts and bolts. All right, so the Minn Kota pedal is a corded pedal. And basically we've got left, we've got right, we've got um, power engage and then power off, power on power off uh, then you have a constant power button so basically this will stay on until you press the button again and above the constant power button there's the autopilot button on the right of the foot pedal you have a wheel with your varying speeds on it from 0 through to 10 this is your spot lock button you hit that you'll hear a beep and you'll see the green light up here to indicate that it's on and basically what your motor will be doing is it'll mark that location and make minor adjustments to keep you on that spot Pretty simple. This button here is just your temporary engage, so you don't want to have your motor running all the time, you just want to have little bursts here and there. Uh, that's where you can use this one. So the whole pedal functions as a up and down heel toe type of system, one way's left, one way's right, so that frees up your hands for when you're fishing. Alright, let's take a look at the motor guide wireless pedal. You need to press the anchor button to turn it on. One beep for on, two beeps for off. And that also doubles as your pinpoint GPS as well. So that'll stay in the spot, keep you on the spot. On this side, you got the constant power. So you hit that, motor will go. You hit it again, motor will stop. Here you have your dial for your speed. One through 10, obviously 10 being the highest. And this button right up on top here is your temporary engage. So you'll hit that, give it a small burst of power, and then when you release it, the motor will stop. So heel down, toe down, we'll turn it left and right. So that'll keep your hands nice and free when you're trying to land a fish. If you flip it over, you can see your hatch here for the two double A's and some brief instructions there on operation. Now you can screw this down, uh, either through the top here, or there's one hole at the bottom there that you can screw down. In terms of performance of this motor, I think one of the biggest things is responsiveness, how fast it turns. So here's a real-time clip of what it takes to do a full revolution of the motor. And it's pretty good. It's not too bad at all. The thing is the noise. It's 
pretty noisy going one way, then the other way. It's really quiet, so I don't know what's up with that. It's just the way it is. Another good thing about this, you put it on spot lock and it starts to get a little bit tangled. It'll turn itself around and reposition itself so it's no longer tangled. So that's very good. In terms of stowing and deploying, seems to be easy. I've used this motor for a year now. Uh, the lift assist is really good here. Just don't get your hand stuck behind it because that'll whip down if you get your hand in between the two and smack your knuckles. Uh, the prop, while we're at it, it's good. Had zero problems with that. It gets hit by rocks on the regular. It's still good. In terms of battery life, I run two 120 amp hour batteries uh, and I can run this motor for about 16 hours. So the performance on the motor guide, again, with the responsiveness and how fast it turns, it's pretty quick. Here it is in real time. It's it's pretty quick. It's probably as close as you're gonna to get to a cable steer. There's the noise, it's pretty quiet. Again, it's noisy one way, not the other way, for whatever reason. Also responds pretty well left and right. And when you chuck it in spot lock mode, it will um, untangle itself if it's getting tangled like it is here. Somehow senses it, whips itself around and keeps on trucking as normal. So that's always a bonus. Stowing and deploying is pretty easy. Um, obviously you don't have anything to hold on to but the head of the motor when you're pulling it up and putting it down, which I suppose could place stress on that curly, that curly cable at some point in the future. You got a three blade prop on there, it seems to get the job done, it's not too noisy at all. Um, yeah, that's about it. Alright, let's talk about some issues with the Minn Kota. The only real issue that I've had is with the remote sometimes disconnects for no reason like it did here in the middle of operation. Which I'm glad I caught it on camera because it does happen from time to time and uh, no matter what you do you can't get it back unless you turn it off and turn it back on. Now, I've had a few issues with the motor guide foot pedal where it's non-responsive. Uh, you can see here that it will not turn, it will not respond. Uh, and basically, what I needed to do was turn the foot pedal off, stow the motor, and then redeploy, and then turn it back on, and it seemed to work. So, that does happen from time to time. I also had an issue with the temporary engage. As you can see here, I'm clicking the temporary engage and the motor is just sitting there. It is not engaging at all. The setting is on 10, so it should be on full ball. What I had to do, again, was turn the pedal off, turn it back on. So there you go, to wrap up, my two sets is both motors work. Uh, if you want a more versatile, uh, more bells and whistles, go to Minkota. If you want a little bit more of a budget unit that's a bit more simple, go to the motor guide. They both have their issues, both have their good things, they have their bad things like anything. So you have all the information, go and get one.